Well, good morning, everybody. It's 9.30, and today's hearing is now open. We're up to day 13 of the hearings here in Epping. Be lucky for some. Um, can everybody hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay, so I'm Louise Phillips, the inspector appointed by the Secretary of State to examine the district local plan. The programme officer is Louise Sinjin Howe. A couple of housekeeping matters first. If anyone could a mobile phone could please switch it off or turn it to silent. And if I turn to the council for the fire procedure. Uh, thank you, madam. Uh, there is no planned fire drill today. So if the fire alarm goes, we need to exit. If you exit by the route that you came in uh, as the first choice, and if that is for any reason blocked the door behind me and just follow the fire, uh, fire exit signs. And then the assembly point is on the green uh, to the, the rear of the council building. Um, the toilets are located on the stairwells as you came into the building. Thank you. So first of all, just the familiar reminder now about the filming. So this meeting is being broadcast live to the internet and will be capable of subsequent repeated viewing with copies being made available upon request. So by being present here, the recording cameras are likely to capture your image and your image will become part of the broadcast. This may infringe your human and data protection rights and if you have any concerns about this, then please alert the webcasting officer. Please also activate your microphones when speaking for the recording and also so that we can all hear you. Here's a button on it with a little face. If you push that to turn it on and off again when you finish, please. So um, today we're here to discuss some more places. This morning we're discussing policy P8 on Thaden Boyce, P9 on Royden and P10 Nasing. And then this afternoon, a session hopefully beginning at 2 o'clock, P7 Chigwell, and then the rural sites, P13 to P15. So unless there are any immediate questions, if I just ask the council to introduce themselves, please, and then everybody else around the table, if you can say who you are, who you're representing, and what your interest in the session is. Thank you very much. Madam, good morning. My name is Mark Beard. I'm uh, a barrister. I'm instructed by uh, this solicitor to the council on behalf of the local planning authority. To my right sits Ms. Alison Blomb Cooper. To her right sits Mr. David Coleman. And to his right sits uh, Miss Chloe Salisbury, all of whom will be participating this morning. Good morning, Rich Cook, Essex County Council, Planning Service. Good morning, Mary Young, Essex County Council, Highways Related Matters. Uh, good morning, I'm Danny Simmons, I'm from RPS and I'm representing CK Properties Thaden Boys Limited. Good morning, uh, Catherine Williams, um, Savills on behalf of Red Row Homes. Good morning, uh, Stephen Butler from Bidwell's Planning. I'm representing uh, Mr John Padfield, uh, the landowner for site allocation THYB R1 and in addition to that Anderson Group who is the selected developer partner. Uh, good morning, I'm Dr John Warren, I'm Chairman of Thaden Boys Action Group, which is a residence group um, interested in greenbelt protection around our village, um, basically looking at planning applications to ensure that they're compliant with local and national greenbelt planning policies. Thank you. Good morning, Council Elizabeth Fern, Thaden Boys Parish Council. Uh, good morning, uh, Councillor Peter Gooch. I'm Vice Chairman, Thaden Boys Parish Council. Thank you. So, so we'll turn to the agenda then for this morning's session. So beginning with policy P8 and a couple of general matters first, um, just to cover a modification that's proposed to Part C uh, concerning school provision and sustainable transports. Now, I, I will just repeat what I've said in other sessions. Um, Sorry, this, this is it's not on the list that's hand, been handed around this morning. I've seen some people looking at it there. It's, it's been proposed as a result of the, um, the council's statement. It's a, they're, they're modifications that are really common to each of the policies um, now in order to flag up that developments may need to contribute towards the provision of primary and secondary school places and also to pedestrian and cycle links. Um, the council has agreed also to introduce some flexibility in the wording of all of the place policies to make sure that the 
the tests for requiring contributions apply. So there's an opportunity to assess on a sort of time-related basis and a site-specific basis. So it's really just to flag up that those, um, those contributions might be required. So in that context, could I just ask if anybody has any particular concerns about that modification? Thank you. Okay, and then number two, this is a point really raised, I think, by um, Mrs. Simmons, CK Properties. So if recreational mitigation for the Epping Forest SAC is required, could it be delivered by the relatively limited scale of development proposed? So Mr. Simmons has raised this, I think, in the context of the quantum of development proposed in Thaden Boys. And so perhaps if I could ask him to explain his concerns and then we'll ask the council for a response. Uh, thank you, Madam. Um, my concerns are based on the fact that the submission version of the local plan is only promoting three sites for housing in Thaden Boys. Um, and Madam, you will be aware from our earlier submission statements, and I suspect from some of the debate today, that there is clearly doubt about the viability, the delivery, and indeed the justification of two of the three allocations. And it seems to us that there is a prospect of certainly less than 50 units coming forward in Thaden Boys, <clears throat> which is disproportionate to its status as a large village and is certainly disproportionate in light of the objective to encourage housing in the most sustainable locations within the district. Now, on the basis of such a small number, it seems that the prospect of securing land for Sang is either remote or non-existent. And it seems that the best that will be achieved is that um, there will be a, a um, a financial contribution arising from those sites which will certainly not be significant enough to produce meaningful mitigation. And Madam, you'll be aware from the representations that we've made, and in fact others have made, is that there are sites that are large enough in Thaden Boys within single ownership that are large enough to bring forward both housing and SANG, and by way of example, Madam, um, sites that are east of the railway line. Thank you. Thank you. Accepting your, your sort of general overarching point about the, uh, there not being enough development proposed, in the context of, of SANG, in which you've raised it, if, if you're correct and less than 50 units are likely to come forward, how, how important is it to provide SANG? <clears throat> uh, Madam, you'll be aware of other representations from the likes of Natural England who have real concerns about pressure on Epping Forest, um, but also the problems of pollutants across the whole district. You'll also be aware of representations from the Conservators. And indeed, Madam, we are led to believe that it was representations from the Conservators that was a principal consideration in the Council reducing the number of allocations in Thaden Boys. We feel strongly, as are clear from the representations, that Thaden Boys needs to take its share of the housing allocations, indeed based on the fact that it is probably one of the most sustainable locations in the district, it needs to take more than its lion's share. So there is a need for housing. Housing inevitably brings pressure on the Epping Forest SAC. It is a district-wide problem of providing SANGs. Um, there are cases where it is difficult for logistical reasons 
to provide SANGs across the district, there are opportunities in Thaden Boys. So our position, Madam, is that Thaden Boys has the ability to provide SANGs both in terms to accommodate housing requirements in Thaden Boys, but also elsewhere in the district. And the benefit we have is that there is, uh, in particular, one landowner who has control over land that is large enough, um, very, very close to, in fact, adjacent to the underground station. Thank you. The council? Uh, thank you, Madam. Um, the short answer is the council considered that it can be delivered by the limited scale of development. All residential development within the zone of influence is required to mitigate the impacts of recreational pressure arising from that development in accordance with the interim mitigation strategy, which was adopted by the council's cabinet on the 18th of October 2018, and that's EB 134. That interim strategy was endorsed by Natural England in a letter, and that's on the, web, on the evidence basis EB 208, and the Conservators of Epping Forest. That mitigation strategy includes a package of measures and will ensure that there is meaningful mitigation. Given the small scale of individual site allocations in Thaden Boys, none of which meet the definition of large or strategic development, these site allocations are not expected to make provision for or access to suitable alternative natural green space or SANGs. Instead, the mitigation strategy will require those sites to make financial contributions to the monitoring and mitigation measures which have been uh, developed by the Conservatives in conjunction with Natural England. Thus, the Council's approach to mitigating impacts on the Special Area of Conservation will ensure that recreational mitigation can be delivered by the development proposed in Thaden Boys. In summary, the total amount of growth for the village was reduced in order to minimise the likely recreational impacts on the Special Area of Conservation in light of responses to the Regulation 18 draft local plan consultation. Therefore, the small scale of growth of the village is likely to have only a limited impact from recreational pressure. And that was set out at paragraph 30B on page 13 of our matter for hearing statement. Notwithstanding that, policy DM2 requires that all development for which European site issues exist, including the site allocations in Thaden Boyce, must avoid adverse effects on its integrity. And that's explained in our matter one hearing statement in relation to issue five. Paragraph 67 to 69 on page uh, 22 and 23. And part C of policy DM2 identifies Thaden Boyce as a settlement where development will need to contribute to the strategic mitigation solution for recreation, requiring that developers will need to make a financial contribution to deliver the strategy. So development proposals will be required to make those financial contributions as identified in Appendix 6 uh, for the site, proposed site allocations. Thank you. Thank you. And just for clarity, when you say that the growth was reduced in the settlement to minimise the effect on the SAC in light of the Regulation 18 responses, were, were those responses specifically from Natural England and the Conservators? Uh, certainly from the Conservators um, in relation to that, and also obviously the local residents. Okay, thank you. Does anyone wish to raise any more general matters before we turn to the sites? Okay, thank you. So if we turn on now to item three on the agenda, the residential sites. And first of all, looking at R1, Forest Drive. So what I'll do, if it's okay, is I'll first of all ask my questions on the agenda, um, and, f and you can contribute to those, and then if there are any further issues you wanted to raise that aren't covered on the agenda, then, then feel free to do so. Um, so you can, you can see my, my questions there. 
how does the indicative density of 44 dwellings per hectare compare to that in the surrounding roads? Is this consistent with the prevailing character of the area? Then would the requirements in respect of the permissive path enable it to be rerouted if this facilitated a better layout? Now, since the agenda was issued, I have seen this site, and it seemed to me that that path would cut right across the middle of the site as it stands at the moment. And so I suppose I, th I think that the wording probably does need to allow some flexibility over the route of that path. So if it doesn't, then that's something we could discuss. Um, contributions towards the CPZ, controlled parking zones. I think the council's view is that the practice of seeking contributions for this is well established and consistent with the community infrastructure levy regulations. Perhaps you could, the council could explain that and then there's a couple of modifications at the end which I'll leave. So if we can deal with those first three bullet points, please, from the council and then anybody else. Thank you. Okay, thank you, madam. Um, in relation to the question about density, the council has confirmed at paragraph 287 of our hearing statement on page 121 that it considers the density of development will be in keeping with that on Forest Drive and Dukes Avenue. That judgment has been informed by an assessment of the constraints, constraints which may reduce or affect the capacity of the site, including consideration of the local setting and character, as well as having regard to other policies in the local plan submission version, including policy SB3, which emphasizes delivering the best and most efficient use of land, including development proposals in large village centers and close to transport nodes. The capacity assessment took into account that the indicative density of development proposed on the site is approximately 44 dwellings per hectare, that's a net figure, and we accept that is higher than the density of existing residential development in the surrounding roads, but we've taken account of the fact that the site is lower and well screened, and obviously the proximity of uh, the, the tube station. And we do not consider that the indicative density would result in a development which would appear out of keeping with the local setting and character of the area. Um, in turn, turning to the, the permissive path, path um, as we've explained in paragraph 20, 290 of the council's hearing statement, which is on page 123, uh, the council does not consider that promoting opportunities to integrate the permissive path within the development is unduly prescriptive. Instead, the development requirements at page 147 of Appendix 6 encourage discussions with the council on this matter when designing any proposed development layout. The justification for the inclusion of this requirement is to maintain, and where possible, improve connectivity to the wider public right-of-way network. And it will also support our policies uh, T1, sustainable transport choices, and DM5, green and blue infrastructure. The wording of the policy requirement acknowledges the importance of maintaining the route which connects Staden Boys Village Centre and the station with the wider countryside to the north and connections into South Epping. The policy requirement is to integrate it within the development layout and is intended to ensure that walking route is easy to follow, has an open character, is visible and easily accessible to existing and new residents and benefits from passive surveillance from the pr proposed development. The council does not consider that the integration of the permissive path would hinder the creation of a su successful layout for the proposed development and the council would welcome early pre-application discussions on this matter with the site promoter. In so I'm sorry, just, sorry. To, just, to, just to clarify my, my thoughts on that, um, and obviously others may, may have different views, but I don't think, I, I wasn't concerned at all that you shouldn't maintain a path. I can quite see why you'd want to maintain a path. It was whether the wording of the policy suggested that the existing route of the existing path must remain, because if it did, then it goes right across the middle. And I, I will admit, I didn't walk across it, it's all closed up, but it, I could see the whole site, and it just seemed it went into an open field at the back, and it seemed particularly important to me exactly where it went into that open field at the back. So it wasn't that I was suggesting in any way that the path shouldn't be retained, a path shouldn't be retained. It was just whether a path that went straight across the middle of the development site needed to be retained. Uh, thank you, madam, that's helpful. I don't think it was our intention necessarily that it had to follow the exact same route. 
and, and I think that's why we've put in that we would welcome discussions on on the exact route. But obviously, we want it to create a good route through the, the site, and not not one that is not not very friendly to the the, the public because it is on a major uh, a walking route. Um, I was going to move on to talking about the um, controlled parking zones now. Uh, the council does explain that paragraph uh, 292 of its hearing statement on page 123, its justification for the requirement seek, to seek contributions towards establishing uh, controlled parking zones. And that is to ensure that the costs required to mitigate any additional pressure on on-street parking capacity uh, which may result in highway safety issues or unacceptable parking stress or uncontrolled parking are borne by the developer and do not fall on the public purse. And we consider that's a well-accepted practice and, pr and that the principle does accord with the uh, SIL regulations. There are known parking pressure issues in Claydon Boyce in the vicinity of the station and in particular on Station Road to the east of the railway line uh, where informal roadside parking is a particular problem and where establishing some form of parking troll would help to manage the situation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, before I, sorry, before I, um, before I move to take comments, it would be useful if I just highlighted what modifications were proposed to the policy in case it addresses any concerns anybody has. So there's a modification proposed to amend it uh, Appendix 6 to require access to the railway for maintenance and also to require consideration to be had to the visual amenity provided by the trees and hedgerow to the west and north of the site. And then I've had a question there actually, should the revised wording also refer to the brook along the northern boundary? Perhaps I could just take the council's comments on that. Uh, thank you, Madam. The Council does recognise the importance of the existing trees and hedgerows to the north and west of the site and the brook along the northern boundary. Uh, to ensure that these important features are recognised, the Council does propose the amendment which is set out um, on, in our hearing statement on pages 122 and 123 uh, to reflect the wording suggested by the Parish Council in its Regulation 20 representations. Um, the proposed amendment is to uh, change ecology to ecology and trees and the amendment to read uh, development proposal should take into consideration the visual amenity provided by existing trees and hedgerow to the west and north of the site. Proposal should seek to minimise any loss through a sensitive approach to the design and layout of any scheme. And then it go, would go on to say uh, the development proposals are required to make the financial contribution for the Equipoise Special Area of Conservation. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr Butler. Um, thank you. Um, responding uh, specifically to the, uh, the density uh, character question. Um, firstly, I, I guess it's probably worth uh, establishing that um, as uh, Mr Padfield's um, appointed delivery partner Anderson Group is uh, currently engaging in pre-application discussions with Epping Forest District Council uh, to demonstrate the deliverability of the allocation and indeed um, Anderson Group's own uh, commitment to delivery of the site. So I've got two things I want to say in respect of this. The first is in respect of density um, and the 39 dwellings um, proposed on site is an approximation um, that is mentioned in the policy itself. Um, when you look at um, Dukes Avenue and Forest Drive, um, the density of development along those two roads are characterised predominantly by the fact that they, are, uh, they have large rear gardens um, and have a uh, relatively um, uh, characterised by uh, larger family dwellings constructed within the mid 20th century. Um, I would also draw attention to another road which is in relatively close proximity of the site, which is uh, Slade End, which is um, just to the northwest of the railway station. The density of development on that particular site is approximately 55 dwellings per hectare, according to my calculation. And that is a development that was constructed in the late 20th century um, and comprises a mix of dwellings. 
So just taking account of the need for development to accord with uh, the plan in general, um, draft policy H1, uh, which refers to dwelling mix, would require a mix of dwellings to be provided on site, uh, including uh, smaller family dwellings, apartments, um, across 10 years. So it's my view that the density would be appropriate um, taking account of overall policy compliance. So the second point I'd like to make on this uh, point is in respect of character. So this part of uh, Forest Drive, where the site is located, um, is accessed off the cul-de-sac at the very northern tip of Forest Drive itself. So it's, it's directly beyond the fork in the road between Forest Drive and Dukes Avenue. And to my mind, the site is, is physically and visually separate, uh, distinct from the public realm that is experienced as one travels down Dukes Avenue and Forest Drive. Development of the site uh, would not contribute to infilling between existing residential properties along those uh, two streets. Um, and furthermore, it wouldn't um, comprise backland development of existing residential gardens on those two streets either. The site is set back from existing residential gardens, so in my view, um, there would be no adverse impact arising um, as a result of uh, development of the site upon character. So the overarching view on that um, is that taking account of um, uh, the character and density of various developments in the local vicinity. Um, it all contributes to the local character and the density, in my view, would be in keeping. Did, did you have any concerns about the wording in relation to the permissive path? Are you happy that it's sufficiently flexible to allow it to be integrated in, a, um, in an appropriate way? Um, I think uh, we wholeheartedly support the integration of uh, permissive, uh, permissive access uh, through the sites and um, Anderson Group is working to ensure that connectivity can be maintained um, as, in, as is presently the situation. Um, but the permissive access itself is not a public right of way. Um, so the requirement to specifically integrate it through the site in my view is too prescriptive. So I would suggest that the inclusion of a pedestrian route um, would be more appropriate and enable greater flexibility um, for an emerging uh, development design. Um, and Anderson Group would indeed uh, propose to include connectivity to the northern land um, as part of any emerging development proposals. Thank you. Does anyone else want to make any comments about R1? <coughs> Dr. Warren. Thank you. Um, comments on trees, and I declared an interest previously that my wife is a <coughs> local tree warden. Um, EFDC's response, page 122. Um, so we're talking about the northern and western side of the site. Development proposals should take into consideration the visual amenity provided by existing trees, hedgerows to the west and north of the site. I can understand that sort of wearing planning hats, they think of trees as visual amenity, and indeed they are. I would like to see something uh, added by FDC um, talking about how they provide green corridors and an aid to biodiversity, and I think that would also include the brook as well. I could put that forward for your consideration, please. Um, the other point on the effect of th effectively three boundaries to this site, the other one's the, the railway line and its, and its embankment, which I regard as very important um, in the light of the MPPF. That railway line and its embankment has been there since 1865. The MPPF 2012, which I believe, understand, I'm correct, working to that one, um, para 85 bullet point six, that 
Greenbelt boundaries should be defined clearly using physical features that are readily recognisable, likely to be permanent. Well, I think there's no doubt about the permanence of the railway uh, line. And also, Power 83 LAs should consider Greenbelt boundaries having regard to their intended permanence in the long term so that they should be capable of enduring beyond the planned period. Both of those wordings go forward also into the 2018 MPPF. I would like to see if it's possible for um, EFDC to actually codify somewhere reference to those two MPPF paragraphs um, vis-a-vis the importance of the railway line as a clearly defined boundary. If I can put that forward for your consideration and EFD's consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? First, then. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first thing I'd like to mention is the permissive right of way. Um, I think uh, the intention to incorporate it uh, within the site is actually called out in the um, suggested wording by the council. I would actually support that. I don't think it's overly prescriptive. And I think we've already had the discussion as to whether it can be slightly rerouted, but I'd certainly want to see it integrated into the site. Um, and I think just with respect to something that came up, I think you were looking at this anyway from what I understand from the earlier sessions, is that because this site-specific requirements are to be part of policy, the wording, in fact, should refer rather than to should than will, because there does seem to be um, consistency that the Anderson Group is going to incorporate that. It's important because the permissive right-of-way actually leads to the upper field, and it's that area which is an area of open natural green space within the green belt, which is the most popular area. Um, within this side of the village and if anything that already absorbs some of the recreational pressure undoubtedly from dog walkers um, within this side of the village and it's always a very useful area of land. Um, it is to be retained within the green belt and I think important that the access both from site R1 and for of course people who are able to then access the permissive right of way further um, as well as the public a footpath which leads up to Epping and takes you through the other site in the master plan site, which I hope that was mentioned, um, because that's part of your green infrastructure. So we've got two aspects here. There's a public right-of-way, which is part of the green infrastructure, and the permissive right-of-way. So we'd very much like to see that that is understood, that it will be in some way integrated exactly where it roots, I think, would depend probably on the design and layout of, of the new development. Um, with respect to the watercourse, we would like to see reference to that specifically um, because that is another definable defensible boundary. We know it's been there on the maps from at least um, 1915, if not before. Um, there are watercourses as well in other parts of Thaden Boys, and those would be suggested to be there probably for 150 or 200 years, so we think they're all part of the drainage system. It's very important, but it's also, of course, one of the key features that makes up the northern part of the boundary, the site R1, not just um, the visual amenity. We only referred to that when we um, put in our original response um, to Regulation 19 because we were looking at the visual aspect. But I think it is important that it is called out um, that that watercourse is present. In fact, the hedgerow is on either side of the watercourse, so that's probably why the hedgerow has arisen in the place that it is now. We'd obviously like to see that retained um, for the visual amenity. Then, very briefly, coming back to something we did mention, I think this might be just an addition, but we did ask about landscape character because one of the concerns we had, um, depending on what the development looks like in the end, which we don't know how the layout's going to work out, but we did ask for a clause which we put into our hearing statement, which was what the council has used elsewhere in areas where you've got natural landscape to one side of the development, um, was just to ask that we could have some recognition about the design um, endeavouring to uh, reflect the development setting and the landscape. And all it says here really is it should minimise the impact on the landscape character by considering factors including layout materials and external finishes. And since we don't have a design at this time, we think that was important. I'll briefly touch on something else to do with the density. Um, in fact, I think we recognise the density is higher than that of Forest Drive and Dukes Avenue. I think that is recognisable. However, it is a site at the end of Forest Drive, and provided that the design um, looks fairly compatible, if it's something you expect to perhaps find in this location. Um, we had thought that the initial consideration is something like some sort of uh, cul-de-sac or quadrangle, something of that sort. Um, one thing we had thought, but I'm sure this is subject to further discussion, um, it, looking at housing mix, we looked at a sort of broader remit, really, to housing mix, because we've got a lot of two-bedroom three-bedroom semi-detached and detached properties in Forest Drive, Dukes Avenue, and in fact throughout the Baldock's estate. 
And one of the things that we felt that actually um, we do need in Zayden Boys would be smaller units um, for older residents to downsize, and that I think by the density it's already been implied suggests um, apartments. Um, I don't know whether there would be any other form of independent living units. Um, sheltered accommodation, independent living units may give some flexibility also in terms of the size of apartments. I think we need to have some variation. Um, we thought that might enhance the housing mix because obviously a site of 39 is a, not a significant size, but nonetheless it might help the fluidity in the housing market. As we know, we have a very high percentage from the census of 2011 25% higher number of pensioners in our village than in the district. And we also had 245 lone pensioner households with very little um, purpose-built accommodation for residents to downsize. So that was one of our concerns. I think since about 2012, Parish Council has thought about that as a possibility for this site. So that's just something we would ask perhaps at the pre-application stage to be taken into consideration. Um, and really, again, I think the most important thing, we do recognise that the density is higher. I'm sure the residents there will be very well aware of it. It has been quite a sensitive site um, because of its location adjacent to or within the green belt. Um, we felt the design was important. And the only thing we've said is fairly traditional design. Um, it won't replicate what's in the um, immediate vicinity. But we looked at the sort of detailing, we looked at the sort of fenestration. If I talked about traditional proportions, I'd just simply say we're probably not looking at a postmodernist flat roofed. Sorry, Councillor Pell, I'll just stop you there because I think you're probably straying now into some of the into matters that we'll be discussing, a bit more detail than we need that are likely but, but to be discussed all, at the we'll, planning we'll, application we'll stage. Saying, but that's yeah. what we're going to say, we'll come at planning application stage. Thank you. But if we could perhaps ask um, for some recognition, first of all, of, of um, the defensible, definable boundary, which is the brook, and then also <coughs> if there is possibility for the sensitivity of the design to the landscape. Thank, Thank you. you. Could, could I certainly ask you to look, as you're proposing the modification, <coughs> in any case, um, the uh, about incorporating the wording around the brook. I mean, that, that was something that was um, referred yes. to in the representations, which didn't make it into the modification. And um, it obviously is a, a feature that the council agrees is important. Um, whilst we're on R1, before we leave R1 now and move on to R2, um, I have a, a question at the end of the agenda, which we may as well deal with now, um, which is to do with the green belt, the green belt um, contribution of R1. So uh, the, the council's work has highlighted that there's a moderate contribution made by R1 to purpose two. In, um, so perhaps if we could just have a, a, a discussion now about um, that contribution in light of the exceptional circumstances required to justify the green belt alteration. If I could ask the council, and then I'll take any comments on the on the green belt, and then we'll move on to R2. Thank you. Yes, thank you, madam. This relates to the proposed alteration 39, uh, which is documented in Appendix 2 to the green belt and district open land background paper update EB1608. And obviously the site allocation is currently located in the Greenbelt. The proposed Greenbelt alteration was informed by the findings of the, the Greenbelt Assessment Phase 2, that's EB705A, and the conclusions of the site selection process, which is set out in the site selection report, EB805. The Council has previously explained the methodological approach to undertaking the Epping Forest uh, Greenbelt Assessment with regard to not assessing parcels against Greenbelt Purpose 3 and Purpose 5, and that was a discussion that took place at the Matter 4 issue for hearing session and is set out in, in uh, more detail at that, uh, in that statement. The effect that the proposed release of the site set out, set out would have on the purposes of Greenbelt are as follows. Table 8A in our statement identifies parcel... Um, and the contribution it makes to Greenbelt purposes one, two, and four, drawn from the annex. So I'm reading from uh, the hearing statement rather than my hearing notes. Um, in terms of paragraphs 295 to 301 of the hearing statement, uh, that the land makes a moderate con contribution to purpose two, um, and no contribution to the other two purposes assessed, purposes one and four. Um, However, we consider the site represents a small-scale incursion to the Greenbelt, uh, which effectively, as we've heard, comprises infill uh, or settlement rounding, uh, being located close to the London Underground Station and line. 
given the limited scale of development on the site, uh, which is adjacent to the settlement on the lower ground, the enclosed nature of the site and the relatively strong boundary features on all sides, including the brook that we've just talked about, and mature trees together with the uh, railway line, the council considers the harm to the green belt to be limited. Um, as part of that alteration, we are also seeking to regularise the green belt boundary to include an, an anomaly in the form of some land to the rear of residential properties off Forest Drive. Thank you. Um, I would also just draw attention uh, to the fact that within the Greenbelt Review uh, site assessments, uh, sorry, apologies, document reference EB705B, and this is page 387. Uh, this, the proposed allocation site was included. The proposed allocation site was with, included within a larger uh, parcel which extends uh, significantly further to the north than the proposed allocation site itself. So it, it therefore follows that the impact of the development of this site would be significantly reduced compared with how it's been assessed through the Greenbelt Review. Thank you. Thank you. Are we, are we, is there anything further to be said or can we move on to R3? Can I just ask, if you want to speak, you don't need to wait for someone to put their board down. It would be useful if you put your boards up, if you had anything to say in relation to um, any of the matters, so that I know how many people want to, want to speak. So if you want to speak on a particular matter, just put your board up straight away, and then, and then, I'll, that's, then, I'll, then I'll know how many people want to speak. So are, are you still wanting to speak on R1? Um, yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry, yes, you're right. Thank sorry, you. I would just support what the council has to say. Um, and we did recognise um, that although the larger parcel of land, in fact, against the third purpose, um, uh, scored very strongly um, because of the rising topography um, of the land, this lower part, as being pointed out, um, is slightly lower than the railway embankment, and therefore, provided that the development is contained within the boundaries, and that's clearly delineated, um, then I think, again, to the right design, um, that it should be able to integrate well and therefore um, it will make a contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move on now to our site R3. I'm just slightly out of order. Um, which is the Coppice Row development. Now again here, I just wanted to point out that a modification is proposed to Appendix 6 concerning heritage and design. And this is to add a heritage entry to Appendix 6 to require the conservation and enhancement of ball docks. And it's also proposed to add a design entry to take account of the prominent location of the site on a main route by Thaden Green. And these are directly in response to, um, to, to representations that have been received. So I don't have any further questions in relation to that site. So I could... It's, just take any comments that anyone wants to make in relation either to that modification or anything else. Otherwise, we can move on to R2. Okay. Okay, so turning then to R2. And again, as you can see from the agenda, I don't have any specific questions in relation to site R2. So does anybody around the table wish to make any comments? Ms. Simmons. Uh, Madam, we debated R2 at the Matter 5 session, um, and I don't intend to repeat the points that I made there, only to say that um, this is a difficult site. It provides much required car parking for the underground station and we've already heard from uh, Miss Blom Cooper this morning about parking problems in and around the station. Um, it's a challenge to develop the site in light of the car parking situation and even if car parking back can be provided as part of a redevelopment, um, inevitably there is going to be a short-term problem whilst 
construction takes place. Over and above that, um, in view of the need to provide replacement car parking, uh, inevitably a requirement to provide affordable housing, and there are some site-specific challenges with regard to matters like surface water drainage. Uh, Madam, we have serious doubts as to whether this site is uh, deliverable and viable. And insofar as that this site is providing um, 12 homes within the overall total now of 57, it really highlights the concerns about the inadequacy of the housing allocations in Thaden Boys. Um, so, Madam, that's all I want to say with regard to this site. Um, I would like an opportunity just to sort of briefly sum up the position in connection with Thaden Boys as a whole and, and really ask you whether this is the opportunity to do it or whether you give us... Uh, well, if, if we, uh, as, as we're likely to reach the, the end of the agenda, if we take any specific comments that anyone else may have, if they do so on our... Two, and yes. if, if, if not, then we'll, we'll take your, right. your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, could, I, could I ask if there's anything else on R2, and then I'll give the council an opportunity to come back on Mr Simmons' points. Mr Councillor Gooch. Um, just to say that uh, we think this is a, you know, this obviously is right at, at the station. I would like just to make the point that there was a, uh, a site immediately opposite the proposed site where there's 10 units with parking of a similar, similar size. Uh, it has been proved that it can be done and we, uh, we would support the uh, Epping Forest District Council uh, regarding this particular site. May I have one comment? I think also um, within that site should be aware that there is a restaurant called the Balti House, which is obviously um, leases land from TfL. But in fact, we looked at the footprint of that, and it seems very likely that one wouldn't need to extend much further than that, rather than the suggestion that's given that it would cover the whole of the station car park. We think that uh, it's not a requirement, and that's one of the reasons why the density was reduced to 12, to allow it to be just within a smaller area that probably would not in itself affect the car park. Thank you. Okay, if I could ask the council to come back in relation to R2 if it wishes to do so, and then we'll hear um, a, a brief summing up from um, Ms Simmons. Thank you. Uh, yes, just very briefly, madam. Uh, the council is confident uh, that the proposed development is deliverable and that the level of parking provision can be maintained both during construction and once the development is complete. Um, the council does recognise the importance of ensuring that short-term disruption uh, during the construction phase is minimised. And I'll just po point you to the proposed uh, main modification that we discussed in our Matter 5 uh, hearing statement to um, require development proposals to demonstrate how disruption to commuter parking during the, the construction phase can be minimised. And that should include the submission of a construction management statement in accordance with Part D of Policy DM21. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Ms Simmons. Uh, Madam, thank you. Um, Madam, you need to consider housing allocations or indeed the lack of allocations in Thaden Boys in light of the fact that first it's a large village and second and importantly a key objective of the plan is to direct housing to the most sustainable locations. Clearly, Thaden Boys is one of the most sustainable locations in the district. Madam, you'll be fully aware that the consultation draft allocated 303 houses for Thaden Boys. The submission version reduces that figure to 57. We are told by the council that the reasons for the reduction was as a result of objections from the Conservators in connection with the Sang issue, but also on the basis of objections from residents. Madam, with respect, we don't think that they are justifiable reasons. 
firstly, the conservators' concerns can be addressed. Um, and with regard to residents, madam, you should consider that within the context. Um, and we say, madam, that the council's position on this is inconsistent. And for example, I have in mind their approach to Jessup's Green in Loughton, where similarly there was an objection from conservators. And in that case, there was objections from a far greater number of residents than is the case in Thaden Boys. But the Jessup's Green site is allocated for housing. So, Madam, with respect, we say that the reasons for reducing housing allocations in Thaden Boys do not stand scrutiny. Um, Madam, when we look at the three allocations, which total 57 units, of the three allocations, Forest Drive may indeed come forward. Land at Coppice Row is a tiddler, and I think at best that will deliver three, four, five net dwellings. And as you've already heard, there are concerns about the viability and deliverability of the station site. So the 57 dwellings, madam, um, could well fall quite dramatically, certainly to the order of 39, 40 homes at best. And madam, we say in the context of the objectives of the local plan, that figure is simply wholly inadequate. Um, and madam, for that reason, with respect, you need to be advising the council that they need to give serious consideration to making further allocations in Thaden Boys in order to meet the objectives of the local plan and in order to make the plan sound. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Simmons. Would the council like an opportunity to come back on that and then we'll, we'll move on? Uh, Thank you. Yes, just very briefly, madam. Uh, just to refer to uh, the matter four hearing statement where we explained our spatial strategy and the distribution of growth across the district and in particular to paragraph 30, which sets out the proposed growth for each of the settlements in the district um, is justified by way of relative constraints and opportunities of each of the settlements. Uh, this council's spatial strategy and the level of growth considered to be appropriate to realise the settlement vision. Thaden Boys is constrained by high performing green belt and proximity to Epping Forest Special Area of Conservation. While there were a number of potentially suitable and deliverable sites considered within and around the settlement, responses to the Regulation 18 draft local plan consultation indicated the concerns that we've already discussed. And that those are set out in paragraph 2.137 of the site selection report. Uh, and the justification for why each potential site has or has not been proposed is set out in appendices B 1.5.2 and B 1.6.6 .6 of the site selection report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does, does anyone want to make any last points that they haven't had the opportunity to say? Thank you. In that case, thank you very much, everybody, for your contributions. Very helpful. Um, this session will end now. If we could just have a, if we come back in, in 10 minutes, if we say at, um, at 10.35 for the next one, for Royden, um, we need to set up for Royden. So if anyone who's sort of finished could, could sort of move away from the table um, before having your discussions, that's really helpful to the programme officer. Thank you very much. Thank you. 10.30.
part number one. Potential modifications, there are a few proposed, and indeed there's a few changes or alterations to that on this sheet here. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to look at it, Councillor Weibrow. Um, yeah, okay, thank you. So <clears throat> if we just begin with a couple of modifications proposed for clarity, one to the vision to clarify that the glasshouse industry is located in the wider parish of Royden. Anyone have any concerns about that, content with that? Thank you. And then the second modification to paragraph 5.128 concerning the location of traveller sites. Now, the council has proposed an amendment to what it suggested in its hearing um, to clarify that there are no allocations for traveller accommodation within the settlement of Royden. Now, I might be wrong, but I think the point that was being made is that the parish council wanted it to be reflected that there are allocations proposed within the parish within the wider parish of Royden, but I might have misunderstood. Is that, is that correct? Um, that is quite correct, Inspector, yes. Um, we would like it to be very clear that we um, are accommodating two new allocations on top of those of the sites already in the parish. Is, is that something that, that can be accommodated? I think it might have just been a bit of a misunderstanding. I think the point was that it suggested there was no travel or accommodation being proposed in Royden, whereas actually, whilst there might not be within the settlement of Royden, um, there is actually travel or accommodation being proposed within the wider parish. And I think it's probably just a, a sort of misunderstanding. Um, is that something that could be clarified? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Is there anything else you wanted to say on that specific point? No session, no, thank you. Okay, and then a further modification concerning the Lee Valley Regional Park, and this is to paragraph 5.131, setting out that the infrastructure delivery plan will include opportunities to improve links between the settlement, the station, and the Lee Valley Regional Park, <coughs> excuse me, and also a modification to part C to require contributions towards improved pedestrian and cycle links, including to the Lee Valley Regional Park. Park. Any comments? <clears throat> and then a fairly standard contribution as we've gone through these sessions now and up to part C to require contributions towards primary school expansion, secondary school places and improved pedestrian cycle links. Again, <clears throat> with the qualifier that a further modification is generally going to be made to require those where necessary um, assessed at the time and in relation to specific sites. And the one below that as well is another common modification that's being proposed, paragraph 5.131, um, to allow for potential changes to the recreational zone of influence for the Epping Forest SAC. Any comments there? No. I will just ask the council to explain the final bullet point modification there on the list to policy P9 to require air quality assessment in connection with protecting Epping Forest SAC. I don't think that's one we've come across as, as standard, so I can just ask you to explain that. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Yes. Um, so after, uh, sorry, at paragraph 326 of our hearing statement, um, which is page 135, uh, the council proposes to amend policy P9 to include reference to air quality considerations. <coughs> this is essentially to ensure consistency across all of the places policies and to, co uh, to correct an inconsistency in how this policy requirement has been uh, applied across the different places policies. Um, the requirement has arisen from discussions with Natural England uh, where it's been agreed to include a new part of the policy relating to air quality. Thank you. And again, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Any, any comments on that? Right. Okay. Are there any other general matters that either of you wanted to raise before we move on to look at the sites specifically? Councillor Wybrow. Um, <coughs> Ma'am, um, I'm not sure if this comes under general or site specific because matters seem to have changed somewhat. Um, but I would like to make some points 
uh, about the um, proximity of the Water Lane development to Royden and the impact of that um, on uh, the future of, of Royden Village. Um, and also I'd like to just mention the railway station, um, which is something that comes up. Is it appropriate for yes. me to speak yes, on that certainly. for now? Um, well, the water lane development, um, I think, should be taken into account whenever your, uh, allocations for Royden Village are being considered. Um, a massive development of over 2,000 houses on our doorstep. Um, mitigation measures are planned. Um, as far as the impact of this development goes, but um, we think it's inevitable that there will be an impact on Royden Village, um, especially really on our roads and our railways, and that is a matter of some concern. Um, so I, I think, to put it one way, we think we have enough to cope with, with Water Lane on the outskirts um, without having to consider large developments within Royden Village itself. Um, and the other point I wanted to raise here is that um, much has been made of the fact we have a mainline railway station. Um, we do have such a station, um, but it is a small village station. It already uh, appears to be running at full capacity. Certainly it is a very busy and very much used station. Um, again, the impact of developments around Harlow are going to have an impact on the railway as it passes through Royden Village, inevitably. Um, I know that certain plans are being made to increase capacity. Um, some of those may or may not be practical for Royden Village. Um, but the point is we are looking to see an increase in rail traffic going through. Um, we have safety concerns as things stand now about the level crossing which goes across Royden High Street. Um, as things stand now, and this is before these developments come on stream, we have traffic build up, sometimes all the way up the high street. We have cars emitting emissions um, and the air pollution issue that comes from that. We have a safety matter as regards access to Royden Marina Village, the access to which is next to the river, which is next to the station. So there is a backup of traffic sometimes as cars try to turn into Royden Marina Village entrance um, and potentially um, could get blocked across the level crossing. And so there's a lot of um, uh, impact already on the station on Royden Village and um, I, I think we just want to stress that we're not in a position to take a lot more growth in that respect. Thank you. Mr. Hollingworth, any, any general comments? Uh, thank you, Mum. Um, I do have a number of general comments, but they primarily do relate to your question in respect of R3. I okay. can raise those now if you wish. No, or, we'll, we'll, we'll leave, that. We'll leave that for now. Council, any comments in response to what you've heard from Councillor Wybrow? Thank you, Madam. Um, yes, I think we, we understand the concerns that Councillor Wybrow has, has raised. Um, Inevitably, a large development uh, near near to the village and to the parish will uh, have some implications, but the council is seeking to minimise those as far as possible. Um, there are a number of elements to the plan that seek to do that. Um, obviously, there's the requirement for strategic master plans to be produced, so the water lane area will be subject to, or is subject to a strategic master planning process. Um, and within that, the parish council will be a, a key consultee and will be engaged with um, to take into account particular concerns um, that, that arise as the plans progress. Um, obviously when planning applications come in there'll be opportunities as well for, for views to be fed in. Um, there are a number of policy requirements in the plan that seek to, to mitigate impacts and um, particularly in policies SP3 and SP4 around the garden communities. Um, I'd, I would also say in terms of the concerns around traffic and commuting um, that, that the, the focus on the focus 
for the garden communities is on encouraging sustainable movements into the, the town of Harlow itself, um, through sustainable transport corridors and improved public transport, as opposed to um, encouraging people to, to travel to Royden, um, appreciating that there will inevitably be people that, that want to do that. Um, I think the last point is in, in determining the growth strategy, including the, uh, the scale of growth being proposed for inclusion in the plan at Royden, uh, the council was, um, w did take into account the fact that the Water Lane area was in close proximity and therefore um, took that into account in, in thinking about what scale of allocations needs to be proposed within Royden itself. So we'll, we'll move on then to the, to the site-specific matters. Um, okay, so if we start with R1, the old co coal yard, and R2, Kingsmead School. Now, there's a modification proposed to Appendix 6 to identify that the sites lie within groundwater source protection zones and to ensure that the implications are addressed through the development proposals. Now, I've noticed that there's a, a, slight cha a slight change to that in terms of the precise zone um, that, it, that it's within. Um, but that's, again, broadly in response to representations that have been raised. Any comments on that? As you can see from the agenda, I don't have any other specific questions about R1 or R2. So if you, if you do, Councillor Wybrow, then now's the time to, to raise them. Yep. Um, I believe the point I want to make is that um, R2 is the largest remaining allocation in Royden Village. Um, I do have some concerns about uh, um, the consequential amendments which are going to be needed to the plan to accommodate the loss of uh, Royd R3. And um, obviously at the moment, there is no information about what those amendments would be. Um, the implication for R2 might be that um, it would extend further into the green belt. Um, we do have concerns about that area of the village. Um, as it stands, R2 is well, we can live with it, let's put it that way. Um, there is some adjustment to the green belt required already. Um, we wouldn't want to see further adjustment to the green belt there, and we would be concerned if there were any loss of uh, prime agricultural land as a result of amending allocation R2. Um, I, I think it's difficult to say any more without knowing precisely what the council have in mind by way of consequential amendments. Um, but if I could just put in here um, the uh, concept that the quantum of housing proposed for Royden Village um, was, we thought, reasonable in the light of the circumstances, and we recognised the need to make a proportionate contribution to the district's housing needs, and this seemed to be um, such a contribution. It also recognises the character and size of the village, um, and I think a larger development on the outskirts would jeopardise the community feel that we currently have in the village. Um, we welcome the fact that the plan is drafted, does um, acknowledge the distinctive character <coughs> of the village and the fact that they want to preserve that character. And um, I, we would certainly like to see that continue. Okay, thank you. Well, perhaps then if we move on to R3 and, and hear a little bit more about what is proposed there, and then we could ask the council to um, consider if, if, if obviously that allocation were to be deleted following the discussion here today, then what, what the council in, intends, to, intends to do in light of that. So if we could, perhaps if we just have a, a bit of an explanation, first of all, from the, from the council about what's gone on in relation to R3, and then we'll hear from Mr. Hollingworth as well. Um, and then come back to the points that uh, Councillor Wybrow has made. 
Thank you, madam. Thank you. Um, so further to the receipt of Crowdace's Homes uh, hearing statement for Royd R3, uh, the council has held further discussions with the promoter. Um, the promoter has confirmed to the council that they will not be delivering a development on the, on the site of this scale, of the scale proposed within the um, local plan. On the basis that the site will no longer be able to meet the developable test as set out in the MPPF, the council proposes to to delete the site allocation from the plan. Um, the council therefore also proposes to undertake consequential amendments to the plan arising from this deletion, including amendments to policy SP2, policy P9, supporting text and associated figures, um, and appendix six. Also the council's housing trajectory and policies map. Um, to uh, sorry, I should refer you to um, Amendment 6 on, on the sheet. Um, to sort of respond to some of uh, Councillor Wybrow's questions, um, the Council does not consider or considers that the, the site or the loss of the site would have a negligible impact on the housing supply in the plan. Um, the site was not due to make a contribution to housing delivery within the first five years of the plan. So at 14 dwellings, we do, do not think it's um, a material impact on the overall supply, and therefore we would not propose any alterations to the allocations, the remaining allocations as a result. Shall I, shall I ask you, I think it would be helpful, I have, read this, I have read the statement, so I think as we hear it would just be helpful to have a little bit of a, um, a background to, to what, the, what the problems are that have arisen here and what the... Um, developer was was hoping for whether the, whether you see this is the right solution or whether you think something else um, should have happened so perhaps if we ask are, are you best placed to perhaps explain that uh, um, yes. Hollingworth I'll, and then I'll we can see if the council agrees. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes um, the, the issue with the fact that the site isn't deliverable in the form that this submission local plan proposal um, envisaged uh, was first raised with the council I believe back in January 2018 um, so the council has had over, well over a year to address this issue. Um, I think that's the first point that needs to be made here. Um, the second is that I think it does raise wider concerns. So we heard yesterday um, of uh, a site in Onga, where the I think it's R7, where the promoter uh, again um, expressed concerns that the, the number of dwellings and visits of the site simply wasn't deliverable. Um, by virtue of the density that will be required being vastly out of keeping with the area and again we're in an identical situation here with issues of availability on top of that as well and I think this is a particular concern with a number of the smaller sites in particular that have been put forward in this rather simplistic blanket approach to density which hasn't accounted for their immediate proximity to, to a settlement the character of those settlements. Um, in terms of the potential solution, I, I know the council suggests deleting the allocation. Um, presumably, uh, whilst it, well, however it's not clear, that would entail the land reverting back to Greenbelt. Um, I think there'll be concerns there, Mom, because the council's evidence base supports the release of that site from the Greenbelt. Um, I think if it were then to continue to allocate that land within the green belts, um, despite clearly acknowledging it's not required to be maintained, it's, its openness isn't required to be maintained to support the green belts, then that does undermine the integrity of the green belt allocation as a whole. I think that's the, the first concern. Um, and secondly, I think it's important to, to recognise the wider context to all of this as well. Um, the council have acknowledged that they're unable to meet their housing needs within the first five years. I think that's the, the first point. Um, has been explored in detail. Um, there are a number of concerns with the approach to Broyden and how it was assessed within the settlement hierarchy. Um, and I think even if one were to accept the results of the settlement hierarchy, then we are still, with the deletion of those 14 dwellings there, we are looking at, on our calculation, a total of just 48 dwellings for the entire plan period for Royden. Um, and in fact zero additional homes after 2025 and we're talking about uh, a settlement that is constrained by Greenbelt so there, there are going to be very few opportunities to deliver any homes without alterations to the Greenbelt which as we know uh, shouldn't be required until beyond the end of the plan period so we're talking a considerable amount of time in which 
that in fact there'll be zero growth within Royden. Um, on top of that, I think we can't ignore the, and we shouldn't ignore the individual characteristics of Royden. Um, it, I appreciate what has been said about the railway station there, but it is the only mainline railway station within the district. And I would suggest while it is far, far easier to deliver improvements to an existing railway station than it would be to somehow create a new railway station um, or even a new line. I mean, that's going to be completely unfeasible. So focusing on what could be done with the existing station would be a, a logical way to look at how housing needs could be addressed. Um, secondly, while I was well conscious of the concerns in terms of the impact on Epping Forest SAC, and of course in Royden is one of the settlements most detached from the, uh, the SAC there. So in terms of potential impact from recreational disturbance, that's it's well outside the zone of influence, any impacts like to be fairly nominal. And in addition, I'll go back to the point where it's one of the few settlements where there is um, opportunities to, to utilise alternatives to, to the private car, which again helps mitigate another concern about the impact on the forest in terms of vehicle emissions. So that, I think that's by way of background for Royden. Um, separately, Marlon, I think it's also important to, to just note how this site has been assessed through the process. It, it would help me, first of all, just, just as a reminder, if you, if, you could, if you could just kind of cut to the chase, if you like, Sorry, and tell yes, me what you're trying to achieve, what, yeah. what you think um, should happen with this site, and if there's... Well, we, we have <coughs> more. Are you are you seeking a wider allocation? Uh, yes, basically, yeah. if you could if you could yes, just so, sort of sorry, explain just, that first, and yeah, then apologies. Yes, I mean that's the, um, there is a there's, a there's a clear logic to that as well. I mean, not just in terms of Royden's catches, but in terms of how the site has been assessed. Two different um, configurations, as you would have seen from our hearing statement, were put forward by the council. Um, one of those was proposed to be allocated. Um, at EB 805F3, um, which is Appendix 1.42 of the site selection report, uh, the indicative yield is reported to 60 dwellings. Um, See so that, that assessment process is an iterative process, and at EB 805N, which is Appendix B 1.64 of that study, is then referred to as an indicative yield of 246 dwellings which has been adjusted to 196. Um, it then goes on to say that only 6% of that site should be used, but I think that's where we have the issue because there's no ex clear explanation of why only 6%, how that figure has been arrived at. Um, other than there's a reference at B, uh, appendix B 1.6.6, which is EB 805P, to access concerns and landscape concerns. However, um, we have provided the council with information in terms of access. Technical uh, work has been undertaken, which demonstrates that um, at least 150 dwellings can be accessed off a single access point there. So as far as that, that's not a, a valid concern in our view. And nothing has been provided by the council to uh, rebut that or um, contradict those, those findings. Um, secondly, whilst a simplistic assessment of the site as a whole being developed out, I, I appreciate why there might be concerns in terms of whether it could accommodate 246 homes, but we're not suggesting it should, Mom. What we've done is to actually look at landscape in detail. Um, we've brought in a, a specialist landscape consultant who's identified within the whole of the site, we're putting forward seven hectares of uh, net developable land which would not have an adverse on impact on landscape with the mitigation that's proposed, um, which could deliver 180 dwellings, or a smaller uh, um, configuration, again, uh, of four hectares, which could deliver 120 dwellings. And again, we've provided the council with the justification for that. Um, we don't consider that is a modification that would be particularly time consuming as the council has raised concerns about the time it would take to go back and make changes to the strategy but in, in the fundamental strategy for the whole district it's not going to have a huge impact other than to actually make uh, well actually ensure there's a, a proportionate growth directed to Royden. 
Thank you, Madam. Um, I think it's important to understand and appreciate the, the vision for Royden, firstly, that's in the plan. Um, and this takes into account and addresses some of Councillor Wybrow's earlier comments. Um, the vision emphasises the importance of site allocations, maintaining the existing settlement pattern and ensuring the continued preservation of important greenbelt, preventing coalescence between Royden and Harlow Town. In terms of the uh, proximity to the, the train station, the Council did consider this in relation to, to the settlement when arriving at the spatial strategy. But Royden train station is some distance from the heart of the settlement and also only has a limited service, approximately two trains per hour, um, and has limited direct opportunities for employment within the village, increasing the need for residents to travel. Therefore, in comparison to other settlements in the district, it is comparatively a less sustainable location. In terms of the site itself, um, obviously the council has, has, is aware of, of all the representations that have been made. Um, but I think it's important to recognise uh, that we feel that the scale and <coughs> the opportunities for the extent of development are limited. Um, the site selection report sets out a reason justification for, for the, the approach to the site allocation in Appendix B 1.6.6. Um, that is EB 805P. Um, and just to, to give you a, um, a summary, that says that the site was identified as available and there are no identified restrictions which would prevent the site from coming forward for development. However, as a result of the potential for harm to the landscape character across the eastern part of the site, as well as identified access constraints, it is proposed that development should be limited to the far western part of the site fronting Epping Road. Therefore, this part of the site is, is proposed for allocation. Um, in terms of the, 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 the point uh, raised by <coughs> Mr Hollingsworth about uh, the, the Greenbelt release and the status of the site, um, the council would, uh, would not remove the site from the Greenbelt uh, without the allocation. Um, the, the reason for, uh, for altering the Greenbelt boundary was due to it being able to demonstrate exceptional circumstances because there was a deliverable site. If the site isn't deliverable, then the, the circumstances change. Um, in terms of also the, the, the point Mr Hollingsworth raised about the scale of growth in Royden and the need to maintain the, the viability and vitality of the, the settlement, um, as we've heard from Councillor Wybrow, Water Lane area and the garden communities of Harlow are nearby. Um, so I think there is a, um, a substantial amount of growth being planned in, in the area, albeit not within the settlement itself. Um, Lastly, in terms of concerns raised about the ability to, make, to achieve the density on the site, um, we've already discussed this week that the numbers for the smaller sites in the plan are approximate allocation numbers um, as opposed to minimum numbers. Um, so I think the council um, would stick with its conclusion that the, the site should be removed for, for allocation. <coughs> Thank you. Any, any last points, Mr Hollingworth? Uh, thank you, Mark. I'll try and be brief. I think <coughs> first on garden community development, I, um, clearly that development is not going to support the existing community of Royden. It's, a, it's separate entirely from, from Royden. I don't think there's any suggestion by the council that they're seeking to support. That is a part of that garden community's growth of Royden as a settlement. I think that they're frankly looking at the opposite of that, and probably quite rightly so. Royden should be, should be maintained as a distinct, distinct settlement with its own character and its own community. Um, I'm grateful for the confirmation that uh, the reason for projection is, as we've said, B1.6.6. Um, as we heard earlier as well, that document is intended to fulfil the role of the SASEA and the legal requirement to set out the reasons for rejection. Um, and I'll just reiterate the point, Marm, that the two points are access and landscape, and we have provided evidence to the Council to show that those, those points can be addressed. Um, so the, t the only two reasons for rejection given for the larger allocation have, have been shown to be, um, well, sh we've simply put simply more, we've addressed those points. Thank you. Okay. Also, Wybrow. 
Thank you. Um, I don't want to repeat myself, as I think I've already said, that the quantum proposed by the uh, uh, Council is um, acceptable, but that we wouldn't want to see um, any more. I mean, I think the point about water lane is primarily the impact on traffic, road and rail, on Royden Village. Um, and the other point I would just like to emphasise is the fact that Royden is a vibrant community now. It has a good village feel. Um, it's the kind of community we want to preserve. And I think the quantum that's been suggested um, of additional housing, 180 has, has been mentioned, in proportion to the houses already existing in Royden, um, which is about a 710, I think, at the last count. Um, you can see that's an enormous percentage difference, um, and it is simply too much, and uh, we feel strongly that would be unsustainable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll, we'll move on now to um, R4, which I think is the only site that we haven't yet had the opportunity to discuss. Land at Parklands Nursery. Now, I have no specific questions in relation to that site. So again, Councillor Wybrow, if you wanted to make any comments in relation to R4, now's the time. I have no specific comments about R4. Thank you. Thank you. Mr Hollingworth? Thank you. Okay, and finally, on the agenda, green belt alterations. The council set out in its statement the um, results of its assessment in relation to the effects of the green belt alterations proposed, which seem to range from weak, relatively weak, and no contribution. In, in, light, of, in light of those conclusions, again, I don't have any specific questions, but would take any comments, concerns that anyone wishes to express. Who's going to go first? Councillor Wybrow. Just briefly to say that it's been suggested that the boundary should be, green belt boundary should be drawn more widely um, to accommodate more growth um, during the plan period. Um, I and mean, we simply don't agree with that. Uh, the plan is due to last until 2033. I think the amendments proposed by the district um, as of now um, should be adequate. We're very reluctant to see loss of our green belt. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just very briefly, Mom. Um, clearly, the green belts um, boundaries should be able to endure beyond the, the plan period. That is a requirement of, of national policy. It should have that that level of permanence. Um, we have undertaken a green belt assessment, and that is submitted as part of the evidence base for the other um, configurations for R3. And the final point I wanted to make, Mom, is those assessments do include um, consideration of the impact of mitigation, which, as per the Calverton judgment is something that should be considered. It shouldn't just be looking at harm. We should move on to how can that harm be mitigated. Thank you. Thank you. That's the end of the agenda in relation to Royden. Is there anything else anyone wanted to say that you haven't already had the opportunity to do so? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wybrow. Thank you, Ms. Tollingworth. Okay, so we are still to discuss nasing. If we come back at 20 past 11, please. <laughs> 